I will be explaining the process from the Russo-Japanese War to the Pacific War. In the previous issue, we discussed the power struggle between the Imperial Way Faction and the Control Faction. In this article, I will discuss the Quantum Army, which pushed Japan into an all-out war with China. The Quantum Army is one of the general armies of the Japanese Imperial Army. Its history begins around the time of Japan's victory over Russia in the Russo-Japanese War and its acquisition of concessions on the Laolong Peninsula. The predecessor mother of the Quantum Army was the Army Department of the Quantum Governor General's Office, which was tasked with defending the South Manchurian Railway and the Quantum Province. The headquarters was located in Lushun. The Quantum Army was an institution that protected Japan's interests in China. After the Russo-Japanese War, China was in a tumultuous period. Sun Yat-sen defeated the Qing dynasty in the Xinhai Revolution and established the Republic of China. When Yuan Shikai became the leader of the Republic of China, his imperial rule was restored and there was a great uprising against his rule in China. When Yuan died of illness, China was again plunged into chaos. In response to the chaos in China, the Quantum Army independently sought to expand Japan's interests in Manchuria. Japan supported the Manchurian warlord Zhang Zuolin, who was proclaimed Grand Marshal of the Republic of China Peking government in Beijing in 1926 and declared himself the leader of the country. In the 1920s, Chiang Kai-shek, who succeeded Sun Yat-sen, secured power in southern China. He followed Sun Yat-sen's legacy and began the northern expedition with the goal of unifying China. Chiang Kai-shek was building up his forces with the backing of the Soviet Union, and from the Western perspective Chiang Kai-shek was more dangerous than Japan. For this reason, the Western countries extended their support to Zhang Zuolin rather than Chiang Kai-shek. With this support from the West, Zhang Zuolin began to focus more on the West than on Japan. At this time, the Japanese government was maintaining a policy of non-interference in the internal affairs of China. However, when Chiang Kai-shek's northern expedition approached Japan's interests in Shandong province, the government decided to mobilize troops in Shandong province to protect the Japanese. This was the Shandong invasion. Chiang Kai-shek and Zhang Zuolin fought in the northern expedition, and Zhang Gao Su Guin was defeated. At this time, the Quantum Army had given up on Zhang Zuolin, who was not at Japan's beck and call and felt the limits of indirect control through warlords. Therefore, it began to think about establishing an independent state, Manchukuo, in Manchuria, China, and expanding Japan's interests there, including in Shandong province. Prime Minister Jiaqi Tanaka, who was an old acquaintance of Zhang Zuolin, still believed that Zhang Zuolin was still worth using, but the Quantum Army was different. Quantum Army Commander Moraoka believed that Chiang Kai-shek's northern invasion of Manchuria would expand to Manchuria if Zhang Zuolin fled to Manchuria. Moraoka therefore decided to assassinate Zhang Zuolin. Colonel Kawamoto, a high-ranking staff officer in the Quantum Army, carried out the assassination. He blew up the train in which Zhang Zuolin was riding. The Quantum Army blamed Chiang Kai-shek for the assassination, but it soon came to light that the Quantum Army was responsible. The Japanese government was astonished by this self-serving assassination by the Quantum Army. However, the Japanese government took only minor measures, such as dismissing Moroka and Kawamoto, because a major punishment would have been an official admission of guilt by the Quantum Army. Furthermore, Prime Minister Jiaqi Tanaka was reprimanded by the Emperor for this ambiguous action, leading to the resignation of the Tanaka cabinet. This light treatment given by the government to the Quantum Army for its deviation from the government's wishes was enough to further embolden the Quantum Army. However, the assassination of Zhang Zuolin had a negative effect on the Quantum Army. It was his son, Chang Shi Liang, who succeeded him on the ground. He hated the Quantum Army, which had killed his father, and was willing to join forces with his enemy, Chiang Kai-shek. Thus, the Quantum Army completely lost the support of the Chinese people in Manchuria. One important person appears here. 
His name is Kanji Ishihara. In 1928, he was assigned to the Quantum Army as operations chief. His theory was that Japan would eventually have to fight the United States for supremacy. He believed that in order for Japan to fight the US on equal terms, it was essential for Japan to gain Manchuria. To achieve this, he believed it was necessary to separate China and Manchuria and establish Manchukuo. After the assassination of Zhang Zuowen, the anti-Japanese movement increased dramatically in Manchuria. Chiang Shalian built his own Manchurian Railway as a counterweight to the Japanese interest in the South Manchurian Railway, and the South Manchurian Railway fell into serious financial difficulties. There were also a number of murders of Japanese soldiers in Manchuria, and there was growing dissatisfaction in Japan with the government's inability to take effective measures to deal with these problems. Manchuria was also an important Japanese interest for the Japanese people at the time, and it was widely recognized that Manchuria was Japan's lifeline. Kanji Ishihara believed that it was essential for Japan to take possession of Manchuria in order to prepare for the war with the US that was likely to occur in the future. He also recognized that the only way to achieve this was to do so while the Soviet Union was still weak and relations between the Soviet Union and China were at their worst. He also believed that creating an independent government in Manchuria separate from China would not violate the nine-party treaty signed in 1922. Ishihara also advocated the creation of a broad Japanese interest in Manchuria and rational development as the only way for Japan to escape the Great Depression. Ishihara's opinion was fully adopted by his superior, Seishiro Itagaki. Ishihara and Itagaki acted on their own initiative without refusal from the Japanese government. And on the night of September 18, 1931, someone blew up the tracks of the South Manchurian Railway in Muten. This was a staged bombing orchestrated by Ishihara and others. The Kwantung Army then announced that it was the work of Chinese troops, and the Kwantung Army took military action. Against 10,000 Kwantung troops, Chiang Shalian had 110,000 Chinese soldiers. Against the sudden attack of the Kwantung Army, Zhang Shui Liang did not put up much resistance and retreated. Hongzhou, the commander of the Kwantung Army, who had approved Ishihara's plan, initially considered disarming the Chinese forces in Mutan as a possible landing point. However, Ishihara strongly insisted that the major cities of Manchuria should be attacked, and he adopted that opinion. Late in the evening of the 18th, this military action was communicated to the Japanese government and military leaders. Many in the Imperial Army leadership supported the Quantum Army's action and were considering dispatching further military units as requested by the Quantum Army. Kijiro Shidihara, then Minister of Foreign Affairs, was informed by foreign ministry sources that the battle was likely to be a military conflict plotted by the Quantum Army. On the morning of the 19th, a cabinet meeting was held at which Prime Minister Reijiro Wakatsuki asked Army Minister Minami whether the battle was an act of self-defense by the Quantum Army. Minami replied that it was natural. However, the manuscript from Foreign Affairs sources read out by Foreign Minister Shidihara contained the implication that it was a plot by the Quantum Army. The cabinet members became skeptical of the Army Minister's explanation. The Wakatsuki cabinet then decided not to expand the incident. However, the commander of the chosen forces, Shinjiro Hayashi, who had been in communication with Ishihara and others, arbitrarily dispatched the chosen forces to Manchuria. This was a serious offense punishable by death, as it involved the commander-in-chief moving his forces without waiting for an order from the emperor, the commander-in-chief. Prime Minister Wakatsuki was extremely upset by Hayashi's arbitrary action. In the end, however, Wakatsuki approved this action by the chosen forces after the fact and made it an official dispatch. Despite the cabinet's decision not to expand the incident, the Quantum Army expanded the front on its own initiative, and the cabinet was unable to stop it. Thus began the Manchurian Incident. The Quantum Army occupied various parts of Manchuria and wiped out Chiang Shalyong's forces. Then, as had been planned for some time, Puyi, the last emperor of the Qing dynasty, was installed as regent, 
and in March 1932, he proclaimed the founding of Manchukuo. In December 1931, the Wakatsuki cabinet resigned due to cabinet dissension. The next prime minister, Tsuyoshi Inukai, had indicated that he would not recognize Manchukuo, a puppet state of the Quantum Army. However, in May 1932, Prime Minister Inukai was assassinated, and the next Saito cabinet, under pressure from the military and public opinion, was inclined to recognize Manchukuo. Yes, public opinion in Japan strongly supported this action by the Quantum Army. This was due in part to the widespread belief in the announcement by the Quantum Army that the fighting was in self-defense, as a result of provocations by the Chinese military. There was also a sense of distrust among the people of Manchuria toward the government, which had failed to do anything about the anti-Japanese movement that was taking place in Manchuria. At the beginning of the war, the Western countries did not take it seriously as a mere military conflict. But they gradually became concerned about the military expansion of the Quantum Army, which had ignored the Japanese government's policy of non-expansion. Chiang Kai-shek avoided war with Japan and appealed to the League of Nations. The League of Nations dispatched the Litton investigation mission to investigate the incident. As a result, they reported that Japan's actions from September 18 could not be considered as an act of self-defense. The report of this investigation led to Japan's decision to withdraw from the League of Nations. The Quantum Army was about to launch Operation Hot River, which would extend Manchukuo's territory to the Great Wall of China. If Japan had carried out this operation after the League of Nations resolution had been decided, it could have given the League member countries an excuse to enter the war against Japan. Therefore, Japan withdrew from the League of Nations on February 24, 1933, the day the League of Nations resolution was to be adopted, after condemning it. Thus, Japan entered a 15-year war with China. The war was also a major factor in isolating Japan from the international arena. Kanji Ishihara, the architect of the Manchurian incident, was opposed to all-out war with China. His immediate enemy was the Soviet Union, and for that reason he was opposed to all-out war with China. However, his subordinate strategists planned to do as Ishihara had done, to make Inner Mongolia independent and create a Japanese puppet state. In 1936, when he tried to persuade his subordinate, General Staff Akira Muto, to follow the instructions of the central government, Muto told Ishihara, I am merely doing what Mr. Ishihara did during the Manchurian incident. Ishihara could say nothing. In January 1932, a military clash between Japanese and Chinese forces occurred in Shanghai. Due to the sudden deterioration of the Chinese people's feelings toward Japan caused by the Manchurian incident, there was a series of killings of Japanese citizens in Shanghai. As a result, soldiers were dispatched to Shanghai to defend the Shanghai Japanese settlement. This incidental battle between the Japanese and Chinese forces was the result of the war. The fighting in Shanghai was far more provocative to the West than the fighting in Manchuria. The battle in Shanghai directly threatened Western interests in China. The West began to view Japan as a direct threat. The Quantum Army was preparing to fight the Soviet Union, its original hypothetical enemy, while also fighting China. In the next article, I will discuss the Namon Han incident. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe to my channel and click the like button.